We're opening the market as of almost right now. Right, here we go. 9.30 Eastern Time. We're off, we're running, and look at this. Okay, that was yesterday, down 4.73. This is today, down another 30, with a lot of the Dow 30 stocks not yet open. Okay, now we're down 21, down 19. A fractional, I'm going to call it a fractional loss. I was expecting more, but we're down just 14, 12 points on the Dow. I call that flat to slightly lower. David Barnson, come on into this, please. Does the market, is the market telling telling us that when these tariffs are imposed, and it looks likely, it won't have that big an impact on corporate profits or our economy. Is that what the market's saying? It is absolutely not saying that. The, the issue right now is that the market, Stuart, does not believe that it's going to go all the way through, even if they end up kind of posting it on Friday. They think it'll be short-lived as negotiations end up getting resolved. And, of course, I like to think the market is right about that. The fact of the matter is, is that there's a longer-term problem into markets if, indeed, we go forward with an ex accelerated and accentuated trade war. And that is that that capital expenditures... That business confidence, mm. that productivity, the business investment will dry up as it did in the middle and late last year. They need to get a resolution to this for there to be sustainable profitability and confidence in markets. Let's take a look at the big retailers because they stand to lose significantly if 25% tariffs are imposed on Chinese goods coming here. I'm looking and thinking about Costco, Dick's Sporting Goods, mm -hmm. Williams Sonoma. They're on your screens right now. They've been down big over the last few days. They're down again this morning. Yeah. David, would you avoid retail stocks now because of the tariff threat? Yeah, I, I think that we generally have kind of a phobia around that space because so many of them are so levered. But that speaks to the point you're bringing up is they don't have a margin for error. Costco is a little bit different. Obviously, Walmart, they could still have impact to earnings. But I think some of them, they just have such leverage on their balance sheet that to take any kind of hit like this on the margin throws things off. I think retail is a great example of a vulnerable space. But frankly, the industrials, um, you have a, an awful lot of names. And as I brought up earlier, I think that it's also just the macro um, kind of sentiment that it, uh, that it produces uh, across the entire market in drying up that business confidence. GM's self-driving car company gets a billion dollar cash injection from big investors. Look, uh, the stocks are going nowhere at 38 bucks a share. Yeah. I, I, I just don't, David, come on here. I don't buy this. I don't buy this self-driving trend, do you? <laughs> No, I don't buy the self-driving trend in the metaphorical way you're saying it, and I don't buy this stock or any of the other stocks for, that are in this space for that very reason. Uh, the amount of money that is going to get thrown away when all is said and done chasing this thing is unfathomable, and I agree with you, this trend is going nowhere. I want to show you Disney, because they've got a movie lineup to die for. Can we show me that? Put that on the prompter, please. They've got a lineup laid out for the next eight years. There'll be a lot more Star Wars, superheroes, Avatar. Now, that's a lineup, yes. uh, lineup and a half. That's a blockbuster lineup. You like that, David? Uh, markets are always discounting mechanisms, pricing in today what they believe about the future. So my kids love the lineup. I think it's dynamic. It's going to create a ton of revenue and cross-selling opportunity. But until Div Disney raises their dividends, Stuart, <laughs> then I don't believe that they believe it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the vote of confidence is always from management. Yep. Management votes with their dividend growth always. 